So when Honda started the long journey to completely re-engineer the Civic lineup, the company promised us five different chapters. I've already showed you guys chapters one through three with the sedan, coupe, and hatchback. And today, Honda has flown me out to the Mojave Desert, and I'm testing out the highly anticipated 2017 Honda Civic Si, this one being the more popular sedan choice. So was it worth the two-year hiatus with this all-new model? Let's take a look and find out. In case you guys may have forgotten, SI has always stood for Sport Injected. So what exactly does Sport Injected mean? Well, uh, in the SI lineup, it always meant this car had more power versus its uh, other Civic uh, siblings. So with this all new version, you're probably wondering what's going on underneath the hood. Now first, when I pop the hood, I'm gonna notice a couple things. First of all, it doesn't look any different from the turbo that you get in the EXT or the EXL or the Touring. This is Honda's all new 1.5 liter Earth Dreams turbocharged engine with direct injection. No, it doesn't have VTEC. That's always been an SI trademark. I'm sorry, guys, there's no VTEC in this motor. And I'm also sorry to report that the power is the same as the previous generation. It still makes 205 horsepower, but it makes 18 more pound-feet of torque for 192 pound-feet. Now, before you guys start moaning and groaning, uh, you should know that the new SI is lighter. This is about 100 pounds lighter on the coupe and the sedan versus the old mall. And because it has a turbo, it has more torque, and the power is realized at a much lower RPM. Uh, 100 our 205 horsepower is now realized at 5,700 RPM versus 7,000. And you get 192 pound-feet of torque at like 2,400 RPM. That's barely off idle. Now, gas mileage is not really important, at least in this segment. However, Honda made it best in class with this new one. It's 30% more efficient than the old model. Now getting up to 28 in the city, 38 on the highway on premium gas recommended for performance. I highly recommend doing that. Now, SIs are always front wheel drive. This one is no different. It's come standard with a limited slip differential. And thank you, Honda, because a six-speed manual is the only transmission available. A manual is the only way an SI has always been offered. And I'm really glad that Honda is sticking to that tradition. Uh, the power doesn't always sound that great on paper, but maybe it'll be great on the road, which I'll show you guys when we go into the test drive. Under the hood of the new SI, it may not look entirely different, but how about the design? Honda has actually done a pretty good job at differentiating this model and making it look more like an SI. Now, obviously, your first thing you're gonna notice is the front fascia. It's basically got the same front end off of the Civic uh, hatchback, which is definitely a good thing. Love the blacked out grill, the lower front splitter, which actually does add uh, to aerodynamics. And of course, you have the signature SI badge in the grill that's always been uh, the case when you go for an SI model. Now, looking at the headlights, um, SIs pretty much come well equipped in one trim. You will get standard LED daytime running lights. That is the case on every Civic model. Uh, if you guys want those fancy LED headlights, however, they're not available on SI. These are just the standard projector halogens. I imagine a lot of owners are gonna be upgrading that as these can look a little bit too basic for my taste. Now, uh, my particular one is in the gorgeous shade of a GM Blue Pearl. It's a great color. Uh, obviously, I'm showing you guys the sedan. The sedan is gonna be the volume seller. Honda expects about 60% of you guys to pick the sedan. While all SI models will be rolling on 18 inch wheels. Uh, these are riding on 235 40 series rubber. Uh, this particular model has uh, the optional summer performance tires for 200 bucks. And the wheels, honestly, they look the same as what you get on the Sport and Sport Touring hatchback, which is not a bad thing. They're a pretty nice set of wheels. They're about 10 millimeters wider than the previous generation SI and 20 millimeters wider than the uh, regular Civic. Now, looking at the rest of the body, the sedan is definitely the bigger option. Um, this car uh, is roughly about uh, five inches longer than the coupe, uh, which definitely is all in the rear overhang. This car can have slightly odd angles for me when you look at the back. Uh, it looks great, however, in this color, it's starting to grow on me a little bit. Um, looking at the rear here, you have LED accented taillights standard. The brake lights, however, are incandescent, same with the turn signals. The SI sedan will have this more tasteful and subtle rear deck lid spoiler, while the coupe will have the uh, higher wing spoiler. And then, of course, you have the same rear diffuser and the center-mounted exhaust, which Honda says they've tuned uh, specifically for the SI to give it a more better sound. It also is freer flowing uh, to aid with giving you a little bit more power. 
With the sedan being the more practical choice, you're probably wondering how much trunk capacity does it have? Well, I'm happy to report that the current Civic sedan has a very large trunk. This is measuring just under 15 cubic feet of space, lots of usable space. It's very deep. The seats also fold down 60-40. If you guys go for the more stylish coupe, you get about 12, just under 12 cubic feet of space, which is still good. Now looking under here, here, you don't get a spare tire, unfortunately, with the SI. Honda instead gives you an air compressor and a fix a flat kit. So you guys may want to talk to the dealership if you, plan, if you want to at least get, add that feature to your car. So for the inside of the 2017 Civic Si, this is where you're going to be spending most of your time, you'll be happy to know that Honda includes their smart key access system with push button start. It doesn't have a remote spire, of course, because this is a manual. So if you guys you know, are comparing it to an EXT, obviously if it's an automatic, it has remote start. But uh, just push the button to start the engine, put the clutch in, obviously, and it'll fire right up. Now, SIs have always been known for having a very sporty sound, so... You know, I can definitely tell it's louder than the uh, EXT that I last drove or touring, uh, but I have to say it's not as loud as the previous generation SI, which is a little disappointing uh, for a lot of you faithful who are probably trading in your old version. Now, looking at the rest of the interior, let's shut the door first. It sounds nice and solid. Um, you kind of expect that the current Civic platform is a really great platform to start with. Now, the SI has always been based off of the EX plat the EX trim, so it's kind of building on the features of the EX. You'll get Android Auto and a CarPlay. You'll get a leather wrapped steering wheel. Um, the SI kind of adds these really specific seats, which have really aggressive bolstering. They hug you. Uh, they look great. Uh, the only thing, my only issue with them is their cloth. I don't really like cloth. Some of you may not care. I wish Honda would offer leather on the SI, but again, they've never offered leather. But, however, I am happy to report that Honda is including uh, heated seats for the first time, three-level heated seats, even though this is cloth. Now, looking at the rest of the interior materials in here, they're standard Civic stuff. Um, you have some faux stitching here. It's soft touch. This is soft touch here. There's some faux carbon fiber. The door panels are soft touch right there. The windows are one touch automatic for the front, not for the rear. And the steering wheel feels good in your hands. It's nice and leather wrapped. Love the contrasting uh, red stitching. And then, of course, because this is based on the EX trim, you have the um, dis gauge display that's an LCD, which you can customize. Uh, the SI gives you a unique readout where you can kind of go to a track timer or you can go show your throttle and your brake application, the turbo boost gauge, uh, and then your shift light indicator, which has always been definitely an SI thing. I mean, it's definitely got the feel of an SI, just I'm not so sure it has the sound. Now, being that this only comes with a six speed, it better be a good one. And that's where Honda has improved the shifter from the previous generation, which didn't really need to. This is, Honda says this is about 10% um, shorter throw versus the sport hatchback that I drove. And it's a great shifter. Honda has always done great shifters, really nice feeling through the gates, short throw. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you get a backup camera. Uh, that is standard on every SI. You have three different views. Um, and then Honda still gives you the lane watch. That's really the only driver assistance tech this car has is the lane watch and the backup camera. It's an SI. Honda expects you to want to drive this car. Now, um, looking at the rest of the cabin here, this is the Honda Link infotainment system. It's missing navigation. The old SI used to offer factory nav. Honda doesn't offer that anymore. Instead, if you want nav, you have to plug in your phone, use the Apple CarPlay or the Android Auto, which is nice. It's probably what a lot of people are doing anyways. But keep in mind, if you don't have cell service, you're not going to have that navigation function. So it's a little it's weird to me how Honda didn't include nav. At least they gave you the premium audio system. This is 450 watts, 10 speakers. It's not branded, it's just a Honda premium sound. It sounds pretty good. Now I wanna talk about a couple of features here on this center console. Um, you still have all the storage from the standard Civic. Really nice cup holders that slide, it's really deep. You have a USB port here, and then, then two more USB ports down here where you can kind of hide the cords and plug your phone in. Now. Coming over here, uh, electronic parking brake, that's definitely new. There's no more J U-turns with pulling the handbrake for some of you who like to do that. And you have a new sport button here, um, which Honda says alters the suspension, the steering, the throttle response. I'll talk about that more when we get into the driving dynamics, um, but it, it basically turns the gauges red and there's a sport light that button that illuminates. It's supposed to make this car, you know, even more sporty to drive. Sunroof is still included. So in terms of the features, I was complaining that the sport hatchback was lacking that um, and the SI has pretty much solved that. I would like to see Honda offer leather and LED headlights to kind of make this car appeal to that GTI buyer because, you know, some people want those features. But I mean, overall, the cabin is pretty nice and Honda included most of the basics that a lot of the young Younger buyers pretty much won. So obviously you guys chose the sedan because you needed some practicality, so I should probably talk about the back seats. Now when you shut the door, 
still sounds nice and solid. And I have, I'm happy to report the space back here is pretty good. I mean, the current Civic has one of the largest rear seat rooms. You can see here, this is where I'd have the seat to drive. I'm pretty short, but you can see lots of leg room, good foot space. There is a hump right here, though. Some of the older, older Civics, I believe, had a flat floor. No vents, of course. I believe the Sport Touring uh, models or Touring models do give you the vents, but SI, again, is based on the EX. But at least you get a armrest right here, which the Sport hatchback did not have, with some cup holders. And then, like I said, the seats, uh, they do fold down 60-40 to give you some versatility in the cargo area. So as I mentioned before, Honda flew me out to the Mojave Desert, which I've never been to. This is their proving grounds uh, right outside California City uh, to drive the SI. I was out on a track earlier today. However, I really wanted to show you guys, you know, the street drive portion, because this is ultimately where most of you are probably going to drive this car. Um, and this is my first time driving the SI. I like the, you know, the, obviously Honda's made some pretty nice changes to this platform or to the SI model to differentiate it from the uh, EXT. And sorry, while I try to navigate these crappy roads here, which actually I'm kind of, I was a little bit, I was taking the car off-roading a little bit to get some good shots. Now, every time you start up the SI, it defaults to its normal setting, um, which honestly is supposed to be the comfort setting. Honda says that it dials everything back. I personally didn't really notice too much of a difference, but for most of the drive, I'm gonna go back into sport, which you push by pushing that button, and then let's see how it all works. Now, the first thing I'm immediately noticing about the new SI is just how quiet and refined it is. And that's a good thing and a bad thing because it's missing the howl, that induction noise that the old K24 motor had, especially since you guys know I used to have an ILX with a six speed, which is basically an SI and a tux. And when you put your foot down, it definitely has more mid-range pull. I mean, the sweet spot of this engine is between three to 5,000 RPM. Uh, and I wanna say it has a smidge of turbo lag, um, and it does feel quicker than the last EXT and Sport that I drove with a six speed. However, it just, with, the, with the, how quiet it is, I don't really notice it doesn't feel that much faster. There isn't any test data on this car, but I estimate it probably gets to 60 in the low six second range, which again, isn't really all that fa much faster than the old SI. Uh, it does feel quicker though. I mean, you do feel this car's reduced weight. I mean, one thing that Honda has really done wonders with is the chassis. I mean, uh, in sport mode here, the steering is just incredibly direct, uh, super quick, has really great feedback. Honestly, even in normal mode, there are times where I was driving this car normal and the steering is great. Now, this car does have adaptive dampers, so when you put it into normal mode, the ride kind of softens up ever so slightly. I didn't really notice it all the time, but putting it back into sport, you can feel the bumps are a little bit more jarry. The throttle response definitely gets tailored back when you go into its normal mode, whereas the sport it kind of makes it a little bit more hyperactive. I just wish the exhaust got a little bit louder. This is seriously too quiet, especially for an SI. Owners are probably going to be replacing that standard exhaust system, which I'm sorry, Honda, you made it a little bit louder. It's still not loud enough, to be honest. Now again, the mid-range is the sweet spot for this car. And the power does taper off slightly when you go past 5,700 RPM. It just doesn't have that same urgency and pull that the old you know, VTEC equipped K24 series motor had, but it's not bad. I mean, this has definitely got that refinement. Uh, the car itself just feels like I'm driving a really premium car. It has like luxury car levels of feel for the ride quality, the solidity. Uh, and I think a lot of you are gonna find a lot to like uh, when you do just daily drive this car. It's an easy car to drive you know, every day. Now, one thing that the SI doesn't offer that other Civic models offer is Honda Sensing. Uh, there's no active lane keep, there's no forward emergency braking, there's no forward collision alert, no lane departure warning. I mean, I, I'm i not sure how I feel about that because I mean, I know enthusiasts don't really care for that. Um, however, there are definitely times where I was kind of missing those features, but I imagine most of the buyers in this segment aren't gonna care anyways. You do get the Honda Lane Watch camera. Uh, when you signal right, it gives you that camera, but no blind spot or a cross traffic alert, which would be nice. But at least Honda did include a limited slip differential, which is something I complained about in my ILX with the manual. When you go around corners and then floor it, it would kind of just burn the inside wheel. This to me actually doesn't really have any torque steer. It just feels really solid. I mean, even though this car is front wheel drive, it's amazing to me how well it puts the power down. You know, it doesn't really have overwhelming amounts of power. I mean, a lot of you were super disappointed uh, by the fact that this has a 1.5 turbo instead of a detuned two liter from the Type R motor. But I can see why Honda, I feel like Honda 
you know, downsized this car and made it a little bit less sporty because the Type R is now available or is going to be available in the States, which I haven't driven the Type R yet. I'll be driving the Type R uh, next month in Montreal. But I mean, overall, uh, if you guys are trading in from your old K-Series you know, SI models, you're gonna find a little bit of elements of this new one that may or may not disappoint you. Now because this car is so quiet, it is a little bit easier to bounce off the rev limiter. Luckily, Honda gives you some shift lights um, that lets you know when it's time to shift. But again, you may as well short shift this car because I do feel the power taper off past 5,500 RPM. It just feels a little bit sleepy, whereas the old SI had that continuous pull when the VTEC kicked in. So again, it's a little bit disappointing, not a deal breaker. Uh, this is definitely a lot how a lot of more modern turbo engines feel. It's just that the VTEC engine gave the SI that signature character. So now it's it's gone a little bit with this car until you you know give it a louder exhaust to kind of wake the wake the car up and make it feel more performance oriented. But you can see here out on the open highway, put this car into sixth gear. Uh, it's cruising at around 2200 RPM at 60. And you know, there is some road noise, but this road's pretty crappy that we're on. Honestly, I'm impressed with the ride quality. I'm impressed with the steering. I'm impressed with the entire chassis. The rigidity of this car is roughly 25% more rigid than the old one, but it's about 100 pounds lighter. So in terms of the driving dynamics and feel, this all new SI is in a much bigger league, a much more refined league uh, versus the previous generation, which definitely felt a little bit more harsh and a little bit less drivable uh, in terms of a daily basis. Still good on the right. I was trying to see if I can get a little bit of torque steer there, but it's not really not really any torque steer. This car doesn't really have that much power to do it, but it's good. It feels good. I think a lot of you who drive this car, you're going to feel that it has a performance edge over the EXT, but if you're comparing it to the old predecessor, you may start to feel a little bit of, of uh, noise lacking in that department. When the original CRX SI came to the States in 1985, it instantly won the hearts of enthusiasts around the country for offering a lot of sporty performance at a great value and a pretty drivable package. Now for this all new one, Honda has basically stayed true to the roots. Uh, it has got a lot more torque now. Uh, it has really excellent handling and the car is really quiet on the highway. You could easily daily drive this and not even know that you're driving an SI version. But that also brings me to a couple of problems with the car. I think it's too quiet, honestly. I think uh, it doesn't have that VTEC noise, which a lot of enthusiasts like. I think the exhaust is too quiet, which can be easily fixed with the aftermarket. I imagine the Honda Data tune will come out, which will push the power up. And, I'm, and a lot of you are probably gonna replace that exhaust with something a little bit more free flowing, a little bit louder, because if you're gonna get, get rid of the VTEC crossover noise, I wanna hear more exhaust noise. You gotta give us something backwards. This car is a little too mature, a little bit too tame. Now, um, looking at the price of this car, it's actually still a pretty good bargain. It starts at $23,900. Now that represents about a $2,400 increase over an EXT sedan or coupe. It still makes it cheaper than its competitors like the Ford Focus ST, the Golf GTI, and the WRX by as much as $2,700. Now one competitor that does come to mind that I showed you a full video on was the Elantra Sport. It's $2,000 cheaper, has pretty similar power, it sounds better, which is not something you could say about a Hyundai from you know just a few years ago. But the Honda does have that limited slip diff. It puts the power done better. It's a little bit more track ready versus the Elantra is a little bit more focused uh, for the road. But with all that said, I think the new SI drives fantastically. I think it looks great in either sedan, better in the coupe form, 
Um, I think it'll be a really great bargain when it does come tomorrow, which by the way, it's already on sale. It went on sale actually last week at your local Honda dealers. But anyways, with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview of the 2017 Honda Civic SI sedan. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.